First of all, you're the president of the United States. Second of all, that's your daughter you're talking about. Good afternoon. My name is Randall Johnson of the law firm Little Johnson, Peter and Wang. My firm has been brought in as legal representation for the program you're about to hear. My associates listened through this podcast and found several things objectionable, none more so than the disgraceful hosts. To protect Gets My Goat LLC and its parent company, Doonstief Enterprises, from liability, I have been asked to provide a disclaimer before the episode's usual disclaimer. This show is particularly offensive, and its subject matter is wholly repellent. Oh, and most importantly, not very funny. We would therefore advise you not to listen, ever. But for those three of you still remaining, who do not heed our wise legal counsel, I have instructed the editor to insert a jarring sound effect every time a repellent attempt at humour is recognised. You will know a poor joke has been made when you hear R2-D2 beep, like this. Of course, any level-headed listener would have turned this off long before now, so I think we are safe. Go listen to something respectable. And do not waste your time. I have been Randy Johnson. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And before we start this episode, I think we need a disclaimer. It has been a while since we disclaimed the ownership of this podcast. (laughs) I disavow. That's right. If you or any member of your team should be caught or killed... Do you want to give the disclaimer or should I? Uh, Go ahead. Okay, so the topic of this episode may be, not maybe, will be potentially offensive. Not potentially. This episode's going to be offensive. So, uh, you guys, just turn it off. Uh, Not if you have a thin skin or not if you're political or religious or a small town or from the big city. Just everybody. Turn it off. You'll thank me later. Yeah, this episode is rated NC-150. So, and what does that mean exactly? Uh, I believe that's no children allowed under 150 years of age. Okay. Uh, Actually, I guess if you're over 150 years of age, you can listen. But otherwise, yeah, you, you, you might get offended. I don't know. Might. I suppose it's possible there's somebody out there that will be not offended by it, right? So, uh, how should we begin this? And yeah, I, I hope that we can have this discussion without eggshells entering into it in any way. You think so? Well, we can do our best. Um, I suppose you just need to uh, talk about why you want to have this discussion, and uh, we can go from there. Yeah, I, I, it's a foolish thing to think that we could have this discussion in this day and age. If, if essentially, this all came about because of the firing of James Gunn. Now, James Gunn was a director of exploitation fair of trauma films who somehow got his big break with the Marvel Studios Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Uh, and he wrote and directed those and suddenly became an A... What do they call it? An A-list director. And uh, years ago... Before he became an A-list director, uh, he had a Twitter account, and he used it for um, shock value, let's say. Uh, He tweeted sick jokes. Is that fair? Yeah. Offensive, deliberately offensive jokes about pedophilia and Holocaust deniers and 9-11 and rape. Uh, Have I covered the, the whole... Have, have all I, of the offensive things? No, I think he just got started. I don't know if he used what all things he used it for. <laughs> I wasn't a follower of his account, so I've never seen any of the jokes until this story came up. But I don't follow anyone's account. I'm not a f- I'm not a Twitterer. Or... Oh well, you maybe you should become one, so that we could really get in trouble. Yeah, I have an account for the show. 
And I tried to turn it over to you and you used it for a day and then forgot that it existed and stopped and it just kind of went away. Okay, well, let's not bury the lead. You gave me the, the, the keys to the Twitter vehicle for a week. I, I remember it being a week, but you remember it being a day. Let's say that it was an hour, you know, but we were both wrong. <laughs> and let's see what I tweeted here. The best thing about tying up a bunch of teenage cheerleaders in my basement is when their cycles all align. Smiley emoticon. There's that offensive thing I was telling everybody to watch out for. <laughs> yeah, I basically used the Twitter account that you gave me to make jokes, to try and be funny. Uh, now, most of them were at the expense of a certain Rish Outfield, because that's my humor. But this guy, James Gunn, he, he posted some stuff that is... Like I said, deliberately offensive, super uh, not PC, super shocking and in poor taste. Maybe I can't oversell that enough. Um, but but my the joke I just made is is my version of that kind of thing. Right. I didn't actually tweet right. that when you gave me the keys to Twitter, but I wanted to make a, an offensive statement. I was saving that until later. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they would just get it right out of the open. Just throw some real offensive stuff out there to start so that uh, everybody's prepared for what what awaits. There, there you go. So that, yeah, it doesn't sneak up on you later in the episode. It's like, oh, oh, there it was right there in the teaser. Full frontal nudity. I don't know that we'll be watching this episode with the kids. But uh, yeah, going back to James <laughs> Gunn, in 2010, these tweets surfaced and he apologized and said, you know, oh, you know, this was... This was humor in poor taste, and I apologize for it. I'm not that guy anymore. But uh, jump forward to 2018, and uh, there were some people that d uncovered these tweets again and made a big, big deal about them. And it's just like, look at the hypocrisy of Disney, that they fired Roseanne Barr from her own show for, uh, you know, these right-wing statements, you know, the racist statement, conspiracy theory, stuff like that. But they won't fire this guy for his left-wing stuff, despite, look at this stuff that he had tweeted. And Disney fired him. Even though, uh, you know, he was in pre-production on Guardians of the Galaxy 3 right now, even though he's brought in more than $1.6 billion to Disney with those two Guardians of the Galaxy movies, they dropped him like a, uh, like you on a second date, I would assume. And it just, it, it was weird because, you know, he has been very apologetic about it. And the fans have been like, oh gosh, what's going to happen with Guardians 3? And a lot of the people involved in those movies have been supportive of him and saying, you know, hey, this is... The, the, despite the jokes that this guy made, he's, this is a really decent man. This is a good guy, uh, and he didn't deserve this treatment. And then there has been a backlash against statements like that as well. Uh, it's just been, I guess, interesting is, is, is a fair word, but interesting in a, oh, uh, another one of those biblical signs of the apocalypse just happened. How interesting. And the other day I, I, I called you up and I said, gosh, Big, I'd kind of like to talk about this because, uh, you know, I, I fancy myself an entertainer, of course, in a very, very small way. Our audience is tiny and getting smaller. <laughs> Oof, look at that. The temperature <laughs> must have dropped. Look at it shrink. And yet I couldn't help but think about things that I have said or things that I have joked about uh, or, or just things that were said on the show as a character and how that could come back to haunt us. That I'm not just going to say me, but I'm going to say us. Uh, so I called you up and I wanted to talk to you about that. And I, I felt like, do you remember in the first Harry Potter movie, and they never did it in the other Harry Potters, but Hagrid, the giant, would be talking and he would say... Wait, how did he talk? You're a wizard, Harry. Only I know the, the way to get past Fluffy. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. 
Uh, and then later in the movie, he's like, that was, of course, during that time Dumbledore was sleeping with all those schoolboys. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> he does it like three or four times in the, in the movie. And I thought, that is the title of our episode, guys. I shouldn't have said that because it looks as though maybe we are in an era where the things you say, the things that you put out there can come back to haunt you, regardless of the tone in which you said them or the context or your intention, that stuff never goes away. And all it takes is the wrong person seeing it and interpreting it however they want to. And then, yeah, you might be in a world of hurt. I'm going to let you talk, but back in the day when you and I used to have a podcast, you lived in mortal terror of this. <laughs> you lived in adult diaper level fear of this happening to you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I had heard several things. I mean, I, I think we've talked about this on the show before. There was a, a blogger that we actually did an interview with at my old station. She was most well known for having been the first person to get fired from her job because she'd said something on her blog about people that she worked with that got back to those people. And then they went and complained to the management and the management said, yeah, this isn't cool. And now at this point, that's like old news. You know, that's something that has been going on for years and years. And everybody kind of knows, oh, yeah, you, you can't just like talk about people at work, you, you got to be, I guess, prepared if you're going to say something about somebody for that person to find out about it. And there's even a saying about it that the Internet is forever. I'm not sure. I don't I'm not sure I totally understand how the Internet is forever. I guess there's like the way back machine or something like that with that, like archives, websites and stuff. But it seems to me like it's just as easy for stuff to be lost forever from the internet as it is for it to remain forever. But yeah, I mean, there's always that possibility that somebody you work with is going to find out that you have a podcast. Oh, hey, it's that guy. And then they'll listen to it and then they'll hear what you said about them. And then they'll be like, oh, man, that guy's a jerk. I'm going to tell on him. And... You know, I was always a, a little afraid of something like that coming back and getting me and me wind up losing my job because of something that I said on the podcast. And I tried always to be completely generic in, and you'll notice that probably if you haven't already, uh, if you look in the future, you'll notice I, I don't ever say people's names I'm always like, oh, yes, this guy I work with or my friend at work or my wife or my daughter or my six-year-old or something like that. I keep those things as private as I can so that I can avoid something like that happening. I don't want to get fired from my job someday uh, and cause my whole family a great deal of trouble because I had to shoot my mouth off on a podcast and uh, now it's coming back to haunt me. And for the most part, it doesn't matter because there's we have a few thousand listeners worldwide. You know, <laughs> we have some listeners in England and some listeners in Australia and some in New Zealand and some in San Antonio, Texas. A great deal in San Antonio, Texas, weirdly. But yeah, we, we have a few listeners here and there and everywhere. But, but the possibilities of two listeners of our show who didn't know each other beforehand coming across each other is, it's like struck by lightning levels of coincidence for something like that to happen. So it's really unlikely that something like is going to come back to bite us. Nobody's going to care, but I'm sure James Gunn probably felt that way in 2010 when he was on Troma Pictures that nobody watches. And and obviously, Troma Pictures makes the Doonstief look like... <clears throat> Wait. No, the Doonstief still looks like the Doonstief. 
compared to trauma <laughs> pictures, sorry. But no, but the trauma, he did trauma stuff in the 90s. It, this stuff first came to light in 2010, and that's when he first addressed it and first said, oh, hey, guys, I'm sorry, I, I, I wouldn't make those jokes today. And then Disney hired him, you know, after that had been put forth. But, yeah, but your point is made. He, he addressed it, he apologized, and figured that it was gone, that, you know, the damage had been done, that, that uh, whatever you call it, the, he had put that stuff behind him. But no. And, and I wonder, is, is this going to follow him for the rest of his life? Do you, if you're Paramount, if you're somebody else, do you hire this guy? Or do you say, well, we probably shouldn't hire this guy. This is the guy that joked about rape. Yeah. You know, we, if half of our potential audience is not going to want to see a movie directed by the guy who joked about this. I think he might be able to go back to trauma <laughs> or some, you know, he might be able to do much, much smaller things. But I don't think he's ever going to get a chance again like he got with Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't think he's ever going to be invited back into something big budget because as soon as he does, somebody's going to... And let, I don't know. I mean, there's the possibility that the cultural landscape changes significantly and 10 years from now, it's just like, yeah, sure, whatever. But unless things change significantly, then yeah, no, it's not happening. It's It's like this guy's life is ruined. Which... I don't know. I mean, he didn't do any of the things that he said. He just joked. You know, it's one thing to... Yeah. I mean, we're, it, he joked about pedophilia, which is... It's a bad thing to joke about. Yeah. But shocking humor is nothing new. There's whole genres of things out there. Um, what was the movie called? That The Aristocrats? Is that what it is? Oh, about the vaudeville, the, the old joke? Just... About where the punchline is the aristocrats, but the the fun of the joke is how offensive can you make it leading up to that punchline? Maybe I'm a sewer rat because I know that joke and have told my own version of that joke, but... Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's just... It's, it's like the genre. How offensive can you be? And people do things to be offensive, but they're, they're not doing things you know they're saying things and there's a difference and it feels like we've kind of lost sight of that these days that they, they people can't see a difference between saying and doing you can't joke anymore if you say a joke then i don't know well no no <laughs> you, you you've got a good point because it's not that, okay, the guy was accused of X. Or the guy yeah. denied the Holocaust or made, you know, pro... Well, I guess he did make pro-rape uh, statements, but in, in a clearly dirty joke sort of way. But, yeah, the repercussions were almost exactly the same as if he had been arrested for X uh, or he got drunk and somebody taped him saying these things. And anyhow, because we are, like I said, very small scale entertainers, I couldn't help but think about what sorts of things have I said on the show, which taken out of context or heck in context could get me or get you in trouble. And, and, I certainly have said more offensive things on the show than you have, but it never really occurred to me that it might hurt you because in my mind, it was just like, well, but I'm making a joke. I mean, nobody's going to take this seriously. I'm trying to think of an example. Okay. Okay. Here's an example of something that hasn't even come out yet, but I went on family vacation. I went on a cruise this summer, the first cruise I'd ever gone on. And I did an episode of my podcast about it, the, the play-by-play. And at one point, there was this extraordinarily attractive girl on the cruise that I kept running into. When we went to port, when we went to karaoke night, it was like, oh, hey, there's the buffet. 
And I did a bit on there where I said, you know, I don't, I don't know how old this girl was. I mean, maybe she was 20. And fake Sean Connery says, maybe she was 15. And I was like, well, I, I imagine she was at least drinking age because, you know, she was wandering around without an escort in Mexico. And, and he's like, just I take it back. She was 14. <laughs> then Con- uh, Connery won't leave me alone. He starts singing, young girl, get out of my mind. My love for you is way out of line. You better run, girl. You're much too young. And I'm like, fake Sean, please. Come on. And he's like, what? I'm not the one with the hot sh- for a 10-year-old. And he just got younger and younger. And like I said, that episode has not yet come out. But I will be damned if I'm going to not run that for fear that somebody <laughs> will say, listen to all this pedophilia bull crap. This guy thinks this is funny. And yeah, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy because I am aware that this is potentially dangerous, but I still think it's funny. And maybe I'm asking for it. You know what I mean? But but I, I there are probably a hundred other examples, better examples of things that we have said on the show. Uh, you know, things that got me fired from the show during that Superman Phantom Zone trial episode where we tried to find the most provocative, nasty things Rish might say to get him thrown off the show. Uh, which, you know, of course, I do call you a Mexican at one point. Can you believe that I would say something like that? Oh my gosh, man. It's terrible. But in context, it was exactly what James Gunn was doing. It was saying things that were deliberately shocking and offensive for a punchline, which was you know, Rish has gone too far and now he's been placed in the phantom zone. <laughs> Which, yeah, I'm laughing. May, I'm the only one, obviously. But anyhow, <laughs> we have said these things where if somebody wanted to, if somebody had a bee in their bonnet, somebody had a chip on their shoulder big enough, they could say, look at this statement and this statement Rish Outfield called somebody a Mexican as a pejorative, as an insult. Never mind that my mom is Mexican, that Spanish was my first language. Never mind any of that. He said these things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that's scary. And I wonder how scared I should be about stuff like that. If you were me and you had fake Sean Connery singing this song and all that stuff in a bit that has not yet come out, would you just bury that and throw that out and say, hey, that is not (laughs) worth releasing? Uh, You know, it's funny because I I have this idea that I wanted to do for the ankle cast. Tell me more. In in which a character would join me. Okay, so you, you, have you ever gone into Walmart and you know you're walking through the aisle and then there'll be this big bin and it's got these heads in them, the, the, like giant heads. Wait, wait, is this a Walmart in Haiti? Where where do you find a <laughs> bin of heads? <laughs> they're, they're not actual heads. Oh, okay. They're so. like mask heads. You can put them over your own head. <laughs> they're like cheapy Halloween costumes, okay? So like... There's like a panda bear, and there's a shark head, and there's like a dinosaur head. So anyways, uh, I'm, I'm sure you've seen them. You, you can't tell me you haven't, because they've been doing them now for a while. Like, they, they had them, they came out for, for a while, and then they went away. Then they came back again at like Halloween time, and then they went away again. And now they've come back, and they've got like a Chewbacca-looking one, and Ninja Turtle-looking one. And Rick and Morty looking one and OJ Simpson or Spider-Man or, you know, just the the kind of things that, you know, you might want now. Novelty masks. As a Halloween costume. Right. Right. But they were like these big heads. So they were they were like the size of like the mascots like you would see at at a football game or something like that. You know what I mean? They always have like some big lion or bear or something as their mascot. They were kind of like that, except it was just the head. So you would get the head. And then you just like, that was your Halloween costume. And you're like a dude 
with a giant head on that looks like a... So anyways, after they came out in Halloween, they slashed the prices. They were only five bucks. So I grabbed myself a couple of them, one of them being a teddy bear looking head. And I thought of this character that I could bring in to the ankle cast. And (laughs) my idea was he would be... (laughs) A character that came from a children's TV show. But he would be like just the worst person that could have ever been on a child. So I found him and he was like, yeah, I, I also did TV, but I'm I'm out of work right now. So if I could be on your show, that would be great. So that's why I brought him on. I didn't realize just who he was and he's like you know holocaust denying 9-11 was an inside job kind of a guy just spouting the the craziest crap and one of the things that i considered being that he was fired from his show because uh there was accusations against him for something untoward happening with him and possibly the uh, children that were also on the show and now i i I mean, it was just supposed to be like, this guy is a piece of crap, and everything that he does is is the wrong thing. But maybe that's not okay. Maybe that's not a joke I could get away with. I mean, maybe he just has to... Uh, <laughs> sad thing is, I, I <laughs> maybe we just say he punched a child instead, and people would be like, oh yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Oh sure. No. He drop kicked an infant. Yeah, it's I, that. No worries at all. But I don't know if I could get away with that anymore. Or would that be some one of those things where people are like, "That's it, I'm rage quitting the show." You know, like when we said jokes about cats. Cats was a bridge too far. Everybody quit the show because we said jokes that were not okay about cats. We even had somebody tell us that it was okay to tell jokes about rape. But not okay to tell jokes about cats. That was just too much. I don't understand it. But as far as the rage quitting the show thing goes, that seems fine. If it's not for you, it's not for you. You know what I mean? You're not obligated to listen to our show every week. If you find our humor to be offensive, you don't have to listen to the show. Nobody's holding a gun to your head saying, turn it on. Oh, a new one came out. You must listen. Yeah, it, w- it was like that negative review of my show on iTunes where they said it, it, the show was not worth the money. And I was just like, but it's free. It's it's a creative... Co- we don't even do ads on... A, 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 a. It's like, it's okay if you don't like me or the stories that I write or my rambling conversations or whatever, but... I'm okay with that, but I'm not okay with the deliberate misunderstanding of the show. And maybe that's what we are talking about here. Maybe what he was trying to say is that it's not even worth free. Ah, okay. <laughs> and and there probably is truth to that. But here's the thing. Uh, we are not a political or a religious podcast, but we're trying to entertain. We're not trying to enlighten I'm trying to make people laugh. Yeah, somebody didn't like the sorts of things that Sean, that fake Sean Connery said. That was a comment that we got on my show. That it was just like, you know, the, the things that he says aren't even funny. They're just mean. And I guess that's fair. But the attempt is to walk the tightrope of how mean can he be before it stops being funny. And maybe I went way, way, way too far. But F it, that's my (laughs) attempt to be funny, to tread the line, to see how far I can go with that. And yeah, it's not a scripted show. We don't have sponsors that tell us what to say or what not to say or whatever. We're we're just trying to be entertaining uh, and, and, and also trying to be ourselves. That's the big missive that I tried to put forth at the very, very beginning of the show is that we're going to put ourselves out there and talk about stuff that's important to us or that we're geeked out about. Or, or you know what I really hate? You know what gets my goat? So that people feel like they know us. Like, oh, hey, I'm catching up with those friends of mine that I almost never see again. And 
to be genuine, to be yourself, sometimes you're going to say stuff that, oh, lucky thing we're all friends here. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, lucky thing Lucius Malfoy wasn't standing over there because I could get thrown out of Hogwarts. If a malicious person like that heard this statement. And yeah, I, I guess maybe this is a time of reflection and a time of change, a time where the status quo is changing in America. Because just last year, I would talk to you about all the sexual harassment, right? all the allegations, all the scandals, all the careers that were ending. And I would think about things that I might have said, things that I might have Ooh, gosh, I wonder if I've ever harassed somebody. I, I, I told you, remember when I was Lucky the Leprechaun? They paid me to be in the Lucky the Leprechaun suit. <laughs> there were, uh, I'm going to put quotes in the air, actress that I got a picture with. Uh -huh. And it's just like, you know, put your arm around her, click, take took the picture. But when I saw the picture the next day or three days ago, or three days later, three days ago, here it is a decade later, and I finally saw the picture. <laughs> I did have my arm around her, but I have these oversized giant hands, and one of them is clearly touching her bosom, right? And in 2006, when I did that, that was amusing. Hey, look, check that out. You know, it's like the, I had these giant hands, and when I put my arm around her, there went that giant hand. But suddenly in 2017, I thought, oh my gosh. There's a picture of me actually manhandling a person on the internet. I don't think those counts as don't those don't count as man hands. Oh, oh. <laughs> you can't manhandle someone <laughs> with fake hands. Okay, well maybe that's a bad example. No, it's a good example. I'm just giving you but crap. In this climate that we're in right now, I can't be the only person that's wondered. You know, what have I done or what have I said or what things could come back to haunt me? Now, I was never like a skirt chaser or an ass slapper or any of that stuff. But we all knew guys that were, that would dog any unmarried female employee that came to the office to get him to go out with him. And they, they played the field and all that stuff. And, and you just wonder, it's just like, wow. I could never get away with what he just said to her. But maybe we're in the time where nobody could get away with what he just said to her. And so, uh, yeah, I just, I, I keep thinking about things like that. There was a girl at the office and I must have sent her five marriage proposals via email over the years that we worked together, which to me was hapless, stupid, and harmless. But in today's climate, I wonder, hey, dude, maybe that was not cool. I don't know. Things have definitely changed, and you gotta, you gotta wonder now. That's the thing that you don't know. You know, you hear about the big name people that uh, have been brought down because of things like that. But are there lots of just not big name people out there as well that are getting the same treatment? I don't know. You don't hear about it, so you wouldn't know. But could someone like you find yourself? I guess, I would say you probably could. And there's, I mean, both of us are attempting to be authors. And I've said before, you know, I w my greatest aspiration is someday being able to own an action figure that someone made of a character that I created. You know, if someday I could go to the store and buy Sonny and Gray action figures or something like that, I, w I would feel like I finally done all that I came here to do. <laughs> and I could go and jump off a cliff and be just fine. But there's the, always the possibility that something like that could happen. I mean, there's that dude who wrote The Martian. He just self-published that book. His book became one of the biggest movies of the year. 
always a possibility that you could get lightning in a bottle. What freaking J.K. Rowling was like somebody was just living off of welfare until one day her book went huge and became the biggest best-selling book series ever. Then what happens? Then when your podcast (laughs) is heard, how long will that last? Yeah, especially if you're writing for young people or you have a big teenage girl following or you have a big family audience, you know, in the same way that Disney has the, the reputation of being a family company. Right. That stuff taken in the wrong context or that stuff, things that where you were making jokes, if it can bring down James Gunn, it could bring anyone down. Well, okay, so anyone who isn't president of the United States. <laughs> and that's scary because it's, uh, I, I guess it, I just said it. I, I've spent 20 minutes saying it. I have said things and I will probably continue to say things that could come back and bite me on the ace. And I just wonder, does everybody worry about this sort of stuff? Should we be worried about this stuff? Is this a healthy place to be in our society where somebody's, what is it that they say? They're being judged in the court of public opinion. Right. You know, no criminal charges were filed, but the man's life was destroyed anyway. Yeah. All I can say is that if if things ever do go well for you, make sure you save a lot of that money that you make. <laughs> So that when your career goes down the shithole, you have something left for the rest of your life when you can't get a job. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess that's the pragmatic way of putting it. You know, I hope he saved his money kind of thing. But it just, um, it's too bad that these things are happening. Um, but I don't want to say it's too bad and be misconstrued, where it's just like, oh, it's too bad that the sexual harassers are, uh, are getting caught. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's, that's not what we're trying to say at but, all. But, but it could be interpreted as that's what I'm saying. If somebody were angry enough, they could easily take what I've just said and said, listen to this guy. He cupped the bosom of a, a C-list celebrity. And he's worried about that. You know, it's just like, he is a cereal bosom cupper. I, Lucky Charm cereal, actually. But it just... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the people that have done stuff and, you know, allegations come out and it's like, oh, you know, he raped or he drugged somebody or fill in the blank these things that he did. Okay, I get, you know, there's no defense for that. But we are in a society right now where... You can say something and be punished in much the same way. Or somebody can say something about you and the consequences are just the same as though the cops kicked in your door and uh, and hauled you off. And that's, I guess, what I'm talking about with this society that we're in right now. That's scary because it can happen to you. This show is Small Potatoes, but again... The internet is forever, like you said. And I wonder, you know, people that have much, much bigger followings than us, the people who try and entertain, the people who tell jokes, the people who say things that are shocking, that they don't mean, but it gets a big reaction from their listeners or from the audience or from, you know, whoever it is. Are they worried about this? Are they doing their own very special episodes (laughs) <laughs> where they say, hey, do you remember that big bearded guy on Harry Potter? Do you remember what he used to say? Shouldn't have said that. Yeah, it puts a chilling effect on a lot of things. And I think we're going to all lose out in the end. Because the funny stuff that you could have had is going to be gone. Going to go away. And and you're going to go... I don't know. Maybe, maybe things have been like that for for a while and I just haven't realized it. I know that I haven't gone to see very many comedies recently and I just have a tendency and I I thought it was probably because I'm just old and I don't find stuff as funny as I used to when I was younger. 
can't decide what exactly is the reason behind it. I did show my kids Tommy Boy the other day, just so that I could show them a great old comedy from when I was younger that I thought was really good. I have a friend who likes Will Ferrell and Steve Carell uh, and similar comedians like him a lot. And Will Ferrell tends to drive me nutty. I tend to just hate everything that he's in. Uh, We never did do the episode about the deal breakers, but usually when I see Will Ferrell's name on something, I realize, oh, this one's not for me. This is not going to be funny. It started out, you know, the commercial made it seem like it would be, but then I realized that it's actually going to be Will Ferrell kind of humor. So I guess not. I don't know, maybe things have just, they've stopped doing things that I think are funny on on shows because they're trying to be safe. Is it possible that I just haven't noticed it? That that's why the things aren't funny as as I used to think they were? Well, well, what about Tommy Boy? Was it still funny 23 years later? I thought it was still funny. Okay. I told the kids, oh, you're going to have to be prepared now for me to quote a whole bunch of things out of this movie now that I've refreshed my memory. I still enjoyed it and thought it was pretty funny. And there was some parts that were less funny than they used to be. (laughs) I was going to make them watch Happy Gilmore as well. Uh, but we haven't gotten around to that one yet. I wonder if I would still enjoy that one as much as I used to. I haven't seen Happy Gilmore in a while, but... Yeah. I, I've i grown to hate Adam Sandler, so I'm wondering if I can still like him in the one movie that I thought he was good in. Ah. But yeah, what do you think of, with that? Is it is Have things become less funny because people are trying to be too safe? Or am I just getting old and... I don't think things are funny anymore because I'm a crotchety old piece of crap that yells at people to get off my lawn. Well, that's definitely going to happen as you get older. But to go back to that cruise that we went on, there were stand-up comedians. Every night you could go in and you could watch stand-up. And there were two comedians, and there was one from New York that had this, you know, kind of accent and... (laughs) And uh, then there was a a hip, young, black guy. And the one from New York was family-friendly. And so he'd say things like friggin' and freakin' and stuff like that while he uh, was doing his stand-up routine, you know, that started at 7. But at 9 o'clock, the black stand-up came out. And he'd say words like cock. (laughs) so So I saw that. I went to both stand-ups with, like, my sisters and, and my niece, and I felt like the second one, the adults-only stand-up guy, was way funnier than the play-it-safe. Oh, I can't tell that joke, but uh, needless to say, uh, I smoked a cigarette afterwards. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's, that's funny. But afterward, yeah, my we talked, and my sisters all found the family-friendly one way superior. But a lo- I gotta admit, a lot of the jokes that the adults-only guy told were those kind of jokes, where it's just like, I'm gonna make this way dirtier than the joke needs to be, uh-huh. just to get a reaction. And there was a little bit to that, where it's just like, you could tell that this guy was pushing the envelope and using the F word way more than he normally would just because, you know, there were a bunch of families on a cruise and he's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you not know this was the adult? I saw all the warnings and the DJ that introduced me and said, this is not the family hour. And the fact that I've said fuck 263 times, I've been counting. None of that warned you, huh? Okay, okay, well, feel free to be offended. And, and then, you know, he would ramp it up so it was more offensive than it would have been because he saw people being offended. I, I found that kind of amazing because my reaction, I think everybody's reaction is if you have offended somebody, you're just like, oh, I, 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 I hey, look, I, I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. I didn't mean to, to offend anybody. This guy was just like embracing it and proud of it. 
Anyhow, I guess that's a super roundabout way of saying that there are still people that do this, but what if somebody wrote an angry letter or sent an angry email, called the Carnival Cruise Line and said, hey, you know, I, I had my 12-year-old daughter there and he was telling jokes about, he used the word for rooster that's much shorter. <laughs> Yours is. Um, I, I don't think you should have this guy back. I don't know that they would take into context that it was after nine o'clock and they were no longer in the family hour and the, they had repeatedly warned and it said right there on the schedule, 18 plus. If somebody made enough of a stink, I think they would fire the guy. Yeah, it seems like for the most part, that's the way things work. Enough of a stink. And that's the way it goes. I don't know. Okay, well, I feel like uh, it's not funny anymore, what we're talking about. <laughs> I, I had one more offensive joke that uh, I was saving for the end for when you brought up the tweet and that you let me use the Twitter page. And, and I, I, I typed things like, I've seen a lot of uncircumcised dicks. After all, I was an altar boy. <laughs> but I, I, I won't get to use that one because we said it at the very beginning. Yeah, you're going to have to skip that one because we've... <laughs> but I, 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 there's no moral to this story. It is a scary world that we live in right now. The things that I have been saying that are offensive are jokes. They're meant to be amusing or one of those where you just shake your head. Wow, I can't believe he would say that. You know, it's just like, I don't know. I mean, everybody's sense of humor is different, but I know that the Holocaust happened. And that it's a horrible, horrible thing that happened that we must never forget. But I will still laugh at a Holocaust denier joke. Does that make me evil? Yes. But again, <laughs> the intent is not to convince anybody that the Holocaust didn't happen. It is to make fun of those that insist the Holocaust didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think context is all about it. Context, oh my gosh, should be everybody's friend. Every journalist, every actor, every public figure. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like context is really important. And the things that we say when we're trying to get a laugh out of somebody are different than the things that we say when we mean it yeah that's the thing that it seems like kind of gets lost sometimes is the context people don't care about the context what they're really out for is a scalp for their side do you remember when ben affleck got in trouble at the end of last year because there was a journalist that interviewed him and he sat her on his lap and like made erection jokes and stuff like that. I, he may even have fondled her. Do you remember this? And it was just like, holy crap, this guy's a scumbag. Look at look at this. You know, me too. Ex, you know, exclamation point or not explaining uh, hashtag. And he's like, Ben Affleck's career needs to be over. And this woman, this journalist, was like, No, I I know Ben Affleck. I've interviewed him several times, and it was a joke. I would sit on his lap and make jokes about him having an erection because it was funny, because we were friends, not because of any harassment kind of thing. I was really impressed that she came out and defended the guy. But of course, I'm a Ben Affleck fan. That's, that's, that's <laughs> second only to Holocaust denier, isn't it? Yeah, to, to like Ben <laughs> Affleck is, that's pretty low. You can't really, def that's indefensible. I own a Pearl Harbor poster. Yeah, that's really low. So my argument is invalid. <laughs> wow. You know, I don't think you've said anything more offensive yes. to this whole show. Let me quote the great Hagrid. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> all right. I don't know that we have a moral for this story, so I guess we're just, we're talking about the way things are. 
and hopefully you don't hate us for talking about it. Maybe you have a different opinion about it and you can show us where we were totally wrong. Yeah, I'd like to revisit this topic if there is more to be said, if there are other sides of the coin. If somebody said, you know, if Disney rehired James Gunn, I wouldn't go see that movie. If somebody said that, I'd be like, oh, well, then definitely jokes matter. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I think that that's, it's, it's worth talking about. It's worth discussing. And, and you and I have discussed it, and maybe the discussion should continue. Yeah, if you have something to say, let us know about it, because I am interested in the topic. Maybe your opinion will make cause me to change my opinion. I would I would like to know what's, uh, what folks have to say. So, yeah, comment. And thanks for listening. Yes, as always, thank you for listening, if you are listening. And if you're not listening, can I say F you? Would that be all right, or is it not? Is, is that not cool? No, you can't say anything, man. You've said enough. All right. <laughs> <laughs> good night, every what? Well, good night, whoever is still listening. Yeah, good night to any of you crazy people who actually listened past the disclaimer. <laughs> we'll see you later. Good afternoon. This is Graham W. Cox of the law firm Little Cox Johnson and Wang, legal counsel for Doonstief Enterprises. My associates and I have reviewed this program and I suggested the episode never air at all. However, I was outvoted. But as a compromise, it was decided that this disclaimer is in order. This objectionable filth, now passing as entertainment, was presented under a Creative Commons 3.0 license, which means it is free of charge to download and listen to but only the Honourable Bigglesby Dougal Anklevich and the despicable Richelieu Benjamin Outfield are owners of said rubbish. Also, the statements in said podcast were not to be taken seriously, were accompanied by the outbursts of a droid, and therefore no litigation should be necessary. Uh, that having been said, f*** Big and Rish, f*** that gets my goat, and f- you. Thank you. Your wife, she go, eh? Well, she sometimes goes, yes. I bet she does, I bet she does. It was good.